Hey, how's it going? We are one, oh, we're in the south here. Everyone's cars have no mufflers. We are one week into filming this tornado project uh, with Ricky Forbes, Chris Chittick, and my man, Zach Ramlin, which means today we're doing laundry. But what we're talking about in this video is shooting by yourself. I do have Zach here. He's shooting behind the scenes and second camera, but so many of my projects, I am by myself with my camera, and I wanna give you tips on what are the best practices for this. So let's do that. Here doing laundry. Say hi, Zach. Hi, Zach. <laughs> that was a total uh, dad joke. That right was. There. What's not a dad joke is the fact that I'm unfamiliar with laundromats. Not laundry. I promise you, I do my own laundry. But uh, I threw mine and Zach's clothes into the dryer first with full detergent. Look how wide this is. But uh, you know, it's pre prep, right? You gotta dry the clothing before you wash it. If you go onto Etsy, all the blogs have it. Etsy doesn't blog. If you go onto Tumblr, Okay, I'll see myself out. First tip, use a camera system that you're very familiar with. The last thing you wanna be doing in the field is having to think about your camera. It should be second nature. Don't use a project where you're by yourself as a time to test out new cameras. It's often why I don't even bring GoPros. I'm just not too familiar with them. I just end up gripping my camera to the top of the car to get the shots I need, like this one from Riscate. So use cameras that you're familiar with and to make sure, please, for the love of God, make sure your camera is good for audio or that you know how to get the best audio out of your camera. For this film, I'm on the FX6 and I can get four channels of audio. Very comfortable with that. My next point is review. When you're on the road, review, 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 review. Anytime you can, be watching your footage back on your camera or going that night to your hotel and reviewing the footage that you shot, that is going to help you understand if you're actually getting good content. Because in the moment, it all feels amazing. But then when you actually begin reviewing the footage, you begin to discover all the mistakes you're making. Like, oh, I forgot a wide shot, or my audio is terrible, or that was out of focus, or you know what? I haven't even actually got any shots of their faces. For me personally, I love to review my footage as I'm going, almost doing a pre super, 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 super rough cut of the footage. I throw it all on a timeline, throw music under it, but without understanding where you're at with the footage, you're really leaving yourself up for mistakes. Ricky, how's laundry going? Better than us? <laughs> Way better than you guys. Hi there. Today's video is not sponsored, but I do want to tell you about a special event that we're holding this Saturday, June 11th, where we're gathering some of the best filmmakers in the world so that you can have a live, interactive, Q&A session with them as we interview them for the AOD Filmmaker Summit. We only do this once or twice a year, and this lineup we have for this Saturday is incredible. We have Lance Oppenheim, one of the best new upcoming filmmakers, who already at the age of 26 has had Darren Aronofsky come produce his films like Some Kind of Heaven. He's an incredible, unique film director. I'm gonna be doing a live interview with him. As well, have you seen Tree of Life or To the Wonder? These are incredible films, and we're gonna be having Hannon Townsend, who is the composer on that, talking about how he created these incredible musical scores and what it's like to work with Academy-nominated director Terrence Malick on all his films. Also, we'll be having Zany Aiko, an incredible documentary filmmaker who just won the Special Jury Prize at Hot Docs Film Festival, and her films have taken her to incredible places like prisons where she's interviewed ISIS soldiers, her films are challenging and she embeds herself into war zones and finds incredible stories there. Don't miss out. There is limited space available for this event, so move now to reserve your seat. And also, if you're an AOD student, you can thank Music Better sponsor. You'll be getting free access to this event. AOD Filmmaker Summit this Saturday. We'll see you there. Now back to the video. My next point is leave time to think. Take some time to think about where you're at in the project. For me, that's kind of like I was saying when I'm reviewing the footage, but I also just sometimes need to go for a walk in the morning and think about the story because in the midst, again, everything feels like it's working. You feel like, oh, I'm getting great interviews. I got great shots. But have you got a beginning, middle, and end? Have you got a quote that can help finish the film? Where are you at with your footage? Leave time to think. And kind of on the heels of that quote, I would remind you too that it's not a vacation. When you're out filming a project, especially a travel job, it's tempting to be 
excited about the new sights and sounds and where you are and always want to go for a nice dinner, which you can do those. It's good to take breaks every once in a while. But I would remind you that that third beer or going out super late won't show up in the edit. Actually, it will show up in the edit because you're going to be missing footage or missing story. If you really want to take time to vacation, add a couple days at the end of a job. It's what I like to do before I go back home. I'll tack on a few days where I'm not filming and I know I can relax and come back down from the adrenaline rush. But during the job, you have to be focusing on the story because for months later, you're gonna be so frustrated that you don't have the shots you need and you don't have the footage. You know when you're wearing the pineapple trunks? It's laundry day. Also, I just found out pineapple is a sign that I'm a swinger. I'm not, but that's what people say. My last point is control the locations, but don't control your people. Sometimes in documentary, you can feel like you're at the whim of life, that it's in control and there's nothing you can do. You can't have any say in the story, but that's not necessarily true. It's not that you're trying to control the people in your film, but you can choose the locations that you're shooting at. I'm constantly on Google Maps, looking at cool places, even this laundromat while we were driving, Quickly went to Google, found the coolest looking one. I saw this photo of it at night and said, that's the laundromat we're gonna shoot at because it's a lot more cooler, it's a lot more cinematic, it has all these awesome windows, it's super friendly staff. So when you're shooting a documentary, go find the locations that are gonna make it look the best or work the best for your story. So there you go guys, that is tips filming by yourself. Tonight, we're gonna take this guy to his first baseball game. I'm very excited. Sports. <laughs> Zach, I've loved traveling with you, man. Hope to get to do it again soon. It's been so fun working with Mr. Ramlin, having him on this. We've known each other for a few years now and we've never actually shot together. Woo! Thanks for watching this. If you made it this far, leave a tornado emoji. I'll see you guys on the next one. And hopefully by then I know how to do laundry. <laughs>